Let me see if I can get a couple of screens going here. All right, everyone, thank you for uh, joining um, this uh, session of the uh, Tampa County Engagement slash PARDOT uh, Community Group. Um, today we have a presentation by Carol Springer. Uh, she's going to talk through uh, some solutions that she has come up with for um, uh, reporting um, between PARDOT and Salesforce on the lead funnel, lead conversion, all that good stuff. Um, Feel free to ask questions. Um, this is recorded and it will be up on the event and then um, also um, uh, on the Pardot Geeks blog. Uh, so I will uh, hand it over to Carol uh, to introduce herself and get things going. Okay, great. All right. Thanks, Ben, for having me. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, so why if I want to talk today is because I have... So, you know, I'm a Pardot consultant. I'll go into a little bit of my background here. And I just see so many people really struggling with like lead conversions and ROI and what's working, what's not working. And there's just a couple of really simple, basic reports in Salesforce um, that people, when I do it, they're like, wow, this is so amazing. I can't believe this. So I just want to make sure everyone is aware of these really simple reports that you can do yourself. So, um, so I've been using Pardot since 2011 uh, when it was called Pardot and um, if I'm going to just use the word Pardot, if everyone's okay, I know it's account engagement, but Pardot's just faster to say. Um, and I was curious if anyone knows what Pardot stands for. Does anyone, um, you know, the, the history um, and how long? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of y'all called it Pardo. I feel like every new person calls it Pardo, but it's not a French word. Um, it is a Latvian word means to market or to sell. So that is the history of that. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like the name change, but, um, you know, it is what it is. But I'm just going to use Pardot just for a reference, uh, just to speak fast today. Um, yeah, I've been doing sales. Really, my background, I'm not a creative, not a marketer um, uh, by trade. I was, you know, a business major and I, I was been in sales and sales management for 20 years. Uh, my company is called Gabriel Sales, and we were an outsourced sales organization. So we were reporting to managers all the time and, and leads of sales. And so many of them, like they wanted, okay, well, which lists are working, which cold callers are producing the best. And so that's when we really started to learn how to use Salesforce and Salesforce reporting. And then we actually brought Pardot on for several clients of ours to help with, um, uh, to help support the lead gen process. So I really come from a sales perspective on using Pardot. We'd actually like replace the half a salesperson by automating the outreach um, emails. Um, and so uh, I am a Salesforce certified admin, um, also certified in Pardot. Um, I am one of the founders at Gabriel Sales. I also have an instructor, um, uh, a course on Udemy. It's very basic. It's beginner. So if you're brand new to Pardot or someone on your team is brand new, it's it's really great for just what's a form, what's a landing page, what's a campaign, etc. So that's um, kind of a little bit about my history. And so what we're going to do today is, oh, oopsie here. It's not changing on the page. I think I might need to, uh, oh, wait, there we go. Uh, it's one of the reports we'll see. Okay, let me go back to this presentation. Okay, so the agenda for today is really why we're doing this, the challenges for sales, ops, and marketers. I'm going to dive a lot into campaigns. The word campaign um, can be used in a lot of different places in the system. Um, so we have campaigns in Salesforce, campaigns in Pardot, um, people call emails, blast campaigns. And so I'm going to dive into that and, and why the nomenclature is so important to understand. Uh, I'll touch a little bit on the difference between outbound and inbound marketing. And really the, the, the meat of the meeting is going to talk about the reports and I'd be curious um, if any of you, like what your experience level is in Salesforce reports, have you ever touched them like on a scale of one to ten one being i've seen them i don't know how to edit them um i know how to find them and look at them versus 10 you know how to manipulate them and do charts and graphs and dashboards if you guys could just put something in the chat just to, so i have an idea of like how deep we can go and 
or how rudimentary we want to stay. You can, um, I, yeah. Carol, I would say that you could probably go pretty deep. Um, this is going to, this is more, more likely going to be a more um, advanced group. Um, oh, okay. So um, feel free to go, uh, uh, go deeply and um, yeah. And then we'll just. Great. Okay. That's cool. I, I would just, All right. I, I, would, I would operate under that, under that. Um, okay. Kind of Good. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. And then we're going to just go into like, there's a few things that we have to do to really to make this work. Um, so here's some of, the, some of the questions these reports are going to help answer are, you know, which programs are producing the most leads? And you guys are seeing my screen, right? That versus challenges. Just want to make sure. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, which programs are producing the most leads? Are the leads high quality? And by that, we, we know, are they turning to SALs? Are they moving into unqualified? Are they converting? That will help give us some indication. Um, is sales following up with the leads? So you can do like last activity date and look at lead status for that. Um, and are the deals closing? The, you know, two of my favorite reports I'm going to show today are going to show opportunities and, um, you know, opportunity. So campaigns to leads, opportunities all in the same report. Um, and then we're going to go over how I find this data and also how do I share this data. And that is like one of the best things about Part of being part of Salesforce now is the reporting is so much, so much more robust. You know, Pardot's got like basic reporting, but in Salesforce, we can slice and dice and grab information and cross-reference different um, objects and reporting. It's it's really awesome. And then when we do this, you know, so I've seen you know being a consultant, I've seen a lot of different types of companies: financial services, manufacturing, real estate, um, banking you know, just classic B2B. And every different company has a different length of sales cycle, right? So some might be a two week sales cycle where we're just, you know, where we're running ads online where people are filling out forms. Others are, it's really more account-based marketing where sales is tackling these companies and working with them for years before the deal closes. And so having some of this data, one will help define your, a little bit more about your sales cycle. And then you can also help help you figure out where there's bottlenecks, you know, and then then what kind of help do you need for those bottlenecks? You know, do, do the salespeople need more training? Are we losing deals? Are the leads coming in not even worth sales going after? Um, are they just, are, are sales ignoring them? You know, there's always the constant battle like, between sales and marketing. You know, marketing come, brings in the leads and either sales says the leads aren't high quality or marketing says you're not following up with the leads. Um, but there definitely is a balance and, you know, having these reports will help you understand, you know, where, where someone needs help. Maybe there, you know, there's not one person to blame, but um, how do we make sure the whole process is improved across the board? So the critical thing to, you know, make all this work, uh, <laughs> this is my only move here, this uh, little fun thing, um, not a creative, but I thought that was fun is really connected campaigns. And so connected campaigns are set up in most current account engagements, if you, especially if you just purchased it in the last two to three years. Um, if you purchased your system before 2019, I, I definitely still see some clients not on the V2 connector, doesn't have you know, some of the basic features, user sync turned on, connected campaigns is turned on, not turned on. Um, so if it's not, check with your system and you know i would highly suggest getting that going and so now we're going to talk a little bit more about um campaigns and so campaigns are everywhere in in this you know in these two systems and so of course a campaign we're, we're running a campaign for a webinar we you know we are doing a ppc campaign you know, those are, you know, marketing initiatives, right? And then, um, but in this universe for Salesforce and Pardot, the campaign's going to have different meanings. So you really need to understand this. And I'm going to harp on this quite a bit because if we don't set things up right, the reports won't work. And it's not that complicated. There's no custom coding or anything. Um, so in Pardot, we use Salesforce campaigns. So we have the connected campaigns, but we're going to tie those campaigns to 
places in Pardot. So both assets can be tied to campaigns and people can be tied to campaigns. And so people prospects when they're in, in a Pardot and um, contacts and leads when they're in Salesforce. Um, and then to tie the people to the campaigns, it's very important that those prospects actually are in Salesforce. And I've seen many times people will have a completion action on a form and they'll say, oh, add to Salesforce campaign as member status responded. But they never assign the user to the campaign. And therefore, those prospects are not even in Salesforce. So if they're not in Salesforce, you can't report on them in Salesforce. So that is a very key um, important. So hopefully that's basic for this group here. Um, and then we want to do the member status. So add. So you have to, in order, just because you send someone an email and the email was tied to a campaign, doesn't mean the people that you're sending the email are going to be part of that campaign. You have to tell the system to add them as campaign members. Very important. Um, and then I see a lot of confusion around um, source campaign. And so when you're in Pardot, it's called source campaign. Let me just bring up my, uh, uh, bring up a lead here. Oh, and I'll show a slide on that too. So I don't want to go too in the weeds here right now, but uh, uh, in the wrong place. Actually, I'll just wait till I get there. Um, and then, but source can there's only one source campaign, and that is how the person made it into Pardot. Um, and some people try to do all their campaign influence on that, and I don't recommend that. I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, you know, so generally email programs are not called campaigns. If you've ever worked in HubSpot or MailChimp, they are called campaigns. But in Pardot, as most of you hopefully know, uh, we send emails through list emails or engagement programs. Um, and so campaigns really are what ties all these together. So I just wanted to get I, I don't <laughs> I can't see the whole group here. So just curious if anyone has any any questions coming in at all. Then will you let us know if any questions come in? Cool. Um, okay. Let me get back here. Okay. And then going into Salesforce campaigns. So Salesforce is a, or campaigns in Salesforce is an object. So leads are an object, accounts are an object, contacts are an object. So campaigns is an object that ties um, programs together and program activity and members together. Um, so we're going to go over, make sure you know how to create a campaign. And we're going to talk a little bit about campaign um, member statuses. Uh, I also think it's really important to use the default field called lead source. And what I love about lead source is it's, it's default across the board. So there's this place for it in Pardot. It's in leads. And when you convert a lead, that lead source stays with that person when it becomes a contact, when it becomes, and it actually goes to the account as well, when if it's first made, um, and then it goes to the opportunity if all that's done at the same time. Um, of course, some people have more of an account-based approach and they may just have accounts and contacts and they don't have that whole lead conversion process. Um, then you have to make sure that lead source gets populated. And also what we're going to talk about is really the importance of contact roles. So if you're opportunities don't have contacts attached to them we're not going to get we're not going to know that campaign had an opportunity so it's very important that we have both a process and then governance to make sure that those contacts are tied to the opportunity because only people can have campaigns attached to them and i know there's a new feature with accounts but i haven't mastered that one yet but generally speaking we add campaign member statuses to contacts, and then those contacts are attached to the opportunity. Okay. All right. So in Pardot, um, most of you have may have seen um, Pardot assets, so meaning email templates, forms, landing pages, files, um, they always say, what campaign do you want that attached to? And that's um, where it would be like right here. This is a form. Website tracking is very common. Um, but if you have multiple, like you're doing a pay-per-click program or a LinkedIn ad, then you might have a campaign spe specifically for social 
or LinkedIn. And so there's a whole nother, you know, thought process on campaign naming strategy. You know, I say some people literally make a campaign for every email send they do. And there's reasons for that. I tend to keep it really broad. I work with a lot of companies just getting started. I usually keep my campaigns very like website tracking, Salesforce created, testing, and then maybe like webinars and then nurturing. I usually try to keep them, you know, in bigger buckets. But it is important if you're making anything in um, in part of that you put the, uh, you, you know what campaign you're working with because then that, the campaign is what's going to tie all this together in these beautiful reports. Okay. And then I had mentioned the source campaign. And so where you see that is in your prospect record. There's a place for source campaign. And so the difference between like normal Salesforce campaigns and a, a source campaign, even though they're connected, each prospect only has one source campaign. And again, this is how they made it in here. And so if you see something like this, this is a very common best practice. You might say created in Salesforce, originated in Salesforce, that this person was in Salesforce first. And because of the connector says, create everyone in Pardot, if they're a new contact or lead in Salesforce, then this is the campaign tied to it. So we rarely, you know, if you're making these reports with, you know, uh, campaign attribution, you're going to see probably tons with Salesforce created. And that doesn't really tell us much. And that's why it's so important that we actually add people to the campaign as members, because this default is not going to give us enough quality information. Okay. Um, so, and then once you do tie someone to campaigns, you're going to see it in their, in their record, there'd be an area. And if you don't have that, this is just a component that you can add to your lightning record page. Typically it's in the related. And a lot of times I believe you have to be a marketing user to see campaign or, or maybe just to make new campaigns and add people to campaigns. But I think you can just see them with a normal standard user. Uh, so just check with your admin for your setup. Um, and so if you, once someone is member of multiple campaigns then you'll be able to see this section um, expand. Okay. Um, you know, so as I said, so campaigns are an object in Salesforce. So we create the campaign in Salesforce first. Again, if we have connected campaigns, it's critical. Um, and then we can change these layouts as, as we like, but this is like just an example. Uh, really the key for us to see these campaigns, if the campaigns are not showing up in in part of it, it's because maybe the active button is not checked or the end date is in, in the past. Um, and there's some key tips and tricks to making sure data shows up in part of it or not. Um, and then, so if this is more like graduate level, if you really want to start to do the influence, you would put in your cost um, of the campaign, and then you can compare the cost against the opportunities. I'm not going to go into ROI today, um, but I just want to say that's you can go that deep in there and put some formulas in and then get your actual return on investment. It starts to get tricky with campaign influence because of what if one person's, you know, touching four campaigns, you know, sometimes it'll count them four times in four different opportunities or in, in one opportunity. So I've seen a lot of snafus on that. Um, and then earlier we talked about adding people or adding the campaigns to assets. And the benefit of that is then you can get these really cool engagement reports. And you can put these reports on a normal uh, Salesforce report and then put it on a dashboard. So you can see your whole initiative. So say you're having uh, an event, you know, the annual sales meeting with clients or something. You wanna invite people to that. So all the emails you're inviting, um, you get to see the open and click through rates, and then you have people fill out a form if they're going to go to this dinner or this event, you'll see how many forms were submitted and how many people actually looked at the landing pages. So in one quick view, you can see all your part out activity that's tied to this one particular initiative. And then with the, um, I don't have tons of experience in this, but with the drag and drop, if you use the email enhanced list builder or email builder and landing page, 
my understanding is you can just clone all those objects in the campaign object. Um, so that's something to look out for and um, try to get better at that, share that with you at some point. Um, and then also that, but we're still in the campaigns object. You can see the opportunities that are attached to it. So these opportunities are the opportunities that are tied to the contacts that are members. So this, there's maybe one, two, or three people in that are campaign members in this that now have an opportunity and we'll be able to see that in reports. And just generally, so you can use campaigns for both inbound marketing and outbound marketing. And so inbound is when you're using forms primarily, you're doing paper click, um, just organic web leads, social posts, um, events, webinars, whereas outbound is often used more by like account-based marketing when you have a big, finite target audience or you want to upsell your people, you want to nurture them. So you typically maybe have um, the people in the system already. And so that's when that like Salesforce created campaign will probably be tied to all those. So you have to make sure that, hey, I'm going to outbound these people. I have to, if they take some action. So typically I would only recommend adding action. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not big on adding people to campaigns if they just opened an email. There's so many bots out there and fake opens and there's tons of fake clicks too. So I really like to rely on form fills or file downloads or something or maybe a, a second page deep through a page action that someone hit through my campaign or my, my whole effort here and only add those people as campaign members. Um, and that's going to save you some grief in um, if you send, oh, here's all the people active in the campaign. You send that to sales and they start calling these people and the people are like, I never saw an email from you. Then it gets a little sticky. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have uh, talking with the sales people. So we'll go um, into this uh, reports now. So the first report, um, oh, let me go back to here. Can't find the big thing again. Um, okay, so my favorite report is this is called um, Campaigns with Lead and Lead Converted Information. So the beauty of this one, it, it has camp campaign information, but it's only going to work for people that are campaign members. So if you if you want to run a report like this, and we're going to go into this deep here, um, there's also a report just called leads with lead converted information. And what I like about this is we can get Pardot data like Pardot score, Pardot list activity date, uh, we can get the lead status, but it also then tells us who was converted and if people have opportunities. So everything, it's like it's almost like the full sales cycle um, in one report. So it's going to kind of look like this. So now I'm going to go into that report here. Okay. So, so this one is campaigns um, with lead and lead source. And so to get there, I would just go, you know, to start the report, make a new report, and it's going to be in the campaigns area. And it's, again, it's out of the box, campaigns with leads and lead converted information. So I'm just gonna go into the one I have already started here. Um, and, you know, most of you will know about typically the main thing with the filter is to make sure it's, it's including all campaigns. And so this one is being grouped by campaigns and so I could do something where campaigns were just created this week. Um, and I find these filters always little, you use the word create, you know, the created date. I've seen a lot of mistakes here where people use the lead created date and instead of, or the opportunity created date and where you want really just the campaign created date. So there's so many created dates. So just make sure you choose the right one. If you want to go just find people from this quarter, um, and it sounds like you all might know like the difference you can do like by a hard date or by a, a what's called a, mm, I forgot the, like on the word, 
where you can do like this month, last seven days, et cetera. So uh, relevant, like a rel relative date, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, and then so here's, you know, some of the, some of these are default fields, some I, yeah, so other ones I would put in here, I'd put lead status, because I want to know where we are with the lead. And then I'd like to put that next to the name. So save and run. So like this one here, this, this is now grouping by campaigns. And sometimes when you do these, it might have something like you, the, the bar might be something that you don't want every once in a while. It's like, yeah, number converted like by default. Like why I don't want that. I want to know all, all the campaign members. I don't want just the converted. So even though this report has converted lead information, I can choose to have see who was converted and not converted. So, or I can also do a, um, a stack chart here. I love stack charts. So, we go. so when I group it, I would go converted. So it's going to be just true or false. And then I can change this chart to a stacked bar. So now it says, okay, here's how many people I've had in each of these campaigns. So this is, you're always going to see the sales force created be really high. So you could filter out and then so to filter out, you would say campaign name does not contain Salesforce or does not equal to Salesforce created. And then you can see, okay, in a quick snapshot, here's all the campaigns. Okay, I'm not doing so great on these. These I'm doing pretty well. And actually some of these have converted. So right there, that's one of my signals. And then if I look at the lead status and they go, okay, the ones that were not converted, okay, open, not contact, open, not contacted. I could also run a filter here by lead status. So I'm gonna do a save as, and then just do campaign. Uh, group of leads. By status and I always recommend putting something in this report so even if like we're very tempted to do stuff on the fly or we're in a hurry um, but this is the same uh, as above but grouped by lead status one couple reasons for this is one we're humans we might look at this in nine months from now and we're not gonna remember what we did. And we could look at the filters and see what it is, but the description helps us understand what we're trying to accomplish. And then if we have someone QA in our work, they'll be able to see like, wait a minute, that's what you're saying this report, but something doesn't quite look right. So, and I highly recommend don't messing with reports other people made, just always do a save as, um, and even you can save as a private, um, while you're monkeying around so it doesn't clog up and people start using you know one of your reports by mistake so um, now if i get rid of this i want to group by lead status so not campaign status so the lead status so a lot of different there's member status um, also so save and run hopefully that's all i need and a lot of these i just like kind of end up playing around quite a bit but this one Let's do a stack bar and it's going to be by lead status. Okay, so now it shows here's all the people that came in and only a handful of people are being worked. So I don't know, closed converted is, um, where's my open not contacted? So this, if I was the marketer, we're going, okay, well, this is great. Yeah, we're doing all these leads. I'm doing this, but of course, we're not going to close any because people haven't even contacted these people. So again, this is going to help us bring up some kind of red flags. And then uh, the other report I have, this was grouped. Um, oh, I had one group by lead source and then by campaign. This is by campaign name. And then the other one is going to be 
by lead source. And so lead, the main difference between lead source and campaign is one person can be part of many Salesforce campaigns. Um, grouped with leads. Um, but you can only have one lead source, just as you can only have one source campaign in account engagement. And so again, lead source, I think, is, is really key. Lead source tends to be more broad, so there might be bigger buckets, website, webinars, LinkedIn, um, you know, where your campaign might be a LinkedIn fall initiative 2023. Um, you know, I might have trade show and here I got two trade shows, but trade show, or I might have specific trade shows would be my campaign or it'd be my campaign names where my lead source would just be trade show. And I, I highly recommend keeping these bigger buckets. And then also see a lot of people, a lot of companies, they'll have like a, maybe a lead source detail if you want that additional information. Okay. So I'd just like to pause here a little bit and just kind of, Give a gut check on how everyone's doing. Um, I don't. So. I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, the um, if people have questions, feel free to. I think you can raise your hand. I'm, I'm not sure. Or if you want to put one, put a question in the chat. Um, but if if not, then. then okay, I'll keep keep going. I'm going to just go into. Um, Couple more edits and we go into dashboards then. Sure. Okay. Go for it. Cool. All right. So uh, so now we have dashboards. And so if you all haven't worked on dashboards, they're very powerful. And this goes into the sharing. So now you can in the report, there's a couple different ways. You know, you can get this information and then also you can have the opportunity. So this one I have like just one opportunity in here, but I see it's closed. And so I'm just going to go to another filter here. So I, I could also run my report. Um, let me go to the one I was kind of goofing around with. Um, converted info. This one. Oh, oh, yeah. Actually, I got sidetracked here. So I wanted to also edit that. I could just filter the people that, oh, I grouped the lead status in here, that are only um, converted. So in there, I would do this filters, converted is true, and my report's gonna be much smaller this time. So now, like this might be helpful for salespeople to see, or a sales manager, how many leads were converted this month. Um, that also tells you, it's like, okay, we had a total 10 converted in this time period, you know, and your goal is 20. So you could also have these reports sent to you or to your managers or to the sales team. And where's that, the subscription? You go to subscribe and then you can say, okay, let's have this send out every Thursday and who is it gonna go to? You know, I'm gonna have it go to, I don't I probably don't have too many users in my system. This is my developer edition. So you can add different people um, and then they'll get this sent to their inbox and you can even add, well, you can even add conditions. So only send this to the inbox if, it's a warning say if it's you know the record count you know is is less than you know less than 10. carol are you are you meant to be sharing your screen still oh my gosh uh let me see here thank you um, i'm having trouble finding okay share screen Okay, so it's just right there. Okay, so thank you, Ben, for letting me know. Um, okay, so this subscription, so I'll just go back so we have a visual here. So if you like a certain report and you want to make sure that you kind of, instead of like you having to check and to share with someone, hey, we're not hitting our numbers, we're not hitting our numbers, or yay, we have hit our numbers, great, you can hit subscribe. And then, um, you can add the recipient. You can even add conditions to the report. If like the report is under a certain amount or above a certain amount, then only send that report so people aren't just getting empty reports. Um, and then email options, um, you can actually have the report be attached to the email, which is pretty cool. So 
that is one way to share this report. And then of course, sharing in a folder, that's permission to the, the different folks. Um, and then we have dashboards. And so I just want to, so we have dashboard here in account engagement, but that is not what we, this dashboard is not editable. So this is just kind of out of the box. And again, this is why I'm like, Salesforce is so amazing that we can now really report on all this part of activity uh, straight here out of Salesforce. And so another way to share this is a dashboard and you can put a dashboard like this on the home page as well. So we just refresh that so it's populated. And this is another reason why, as I mentioned about when you're editing reports, to save as because the report that you were working at, looking at could be on dashboard for several you know people at your company and if you start monkey with that then you might break these dashboards so try you know and ideally in bigger organizations they would be permissioned so you can't do that um, but if you haven't done dashboards what I love about it is you can have like this is one report and it's grouped in just a few different ways so this you see it's campaign uh, grouped with leads and converted information. This is the same report. This is the same report. And I'm just showing it different ways. So one way I'm showing it by the lead source. And then one way I'm showing it by the campaigns. So kind of depending on what's important to different um, stakeholders. Um, and then we also have, uh, you know, a donut here. So, okay, 53. So quick, I can see how many um, members. And we can also add further description in here. So this be like, well, what is the 53? Like as you know, a user might not know what that means. So you can go down in here, there's the title. And then this is um, total campaign members. Okay, so you can get really descriptive. You can also, um, you know, change the look and feel like, oh, I want some variety here. I want, you know, some of these to be dark um, and maybe all my donuts are dark or whatever. Um, and then this is also another way to look at this. And the main difference between dashboards and reports is dashboards, you can also, there's more options here. So you can have this dial here, you can have a hard number. So in a, in a normal report, the dial is not an option for you know one of your visuals so that's why i like that on the reports and i see so many people using these dials so if you are you know accountable for goals and so you could have one of here's all the um the leads that were created and then or this one number actually is this is the converted one so these are only people that are converted um all right yeah and then you could also have those where there's opportunity created. You can have those there where there's opportunity one. So whatever you want to measure, it can be really easy done with just that one report um, and then just put it in different ways in the dashboard. And then this is called a like a table version as well. So you can put this um, in here if people want to see you know, what companies are and you can choose in here. So you have the report, but if here you can say, let's actually get the you know name of the uh, the contact full name in there because we want to know just more than just um, just the company name. So we get the company name and then the primary campaign source. If you use UTMs, so you can get the UTM data in here as well. Um, so this is really nice if people really want to really probably more like a sales manager, you know, which accounts are moving because they hear people talking about it, um, which ones came from um, from marketing is very important. And then there's also this awesome um, filter area. So let me just save this and be done. And so the key for these filters to work, so you can have up to three filters, maybe even more these days. Um, I think it might've gone up, but the key, so if you want to put a filter and you have to make sure that data is in all these reports, otherwise it could break. So this is, I put a filter of converted. So if we say, I want to see all the leads that only are converted already, we'll see this actual report here was just converted leads. And so now this number 10 matches this total number and total number because I'm looking at 
data only on converted leads. So I can now see, okay, of all my converted leads, it looks like Salesforce created. And that is helpful to know. It's like, hmm, shoot, my inbound work is not really doing anything. These people were all in the system already. Um, and you could also have a filter by, you know, campaign date. You can have like different periods created in, you know, different months you like. Um, you know, and this is, well, false. I don't think anything will show up on here. Oh, oh no, yeah. So, so now this one went to zero because this dial here was just for converted leads. And then this one went down. It was 53 for all, 10 were converted, now 43 are not converted. So that is a really, really cool feature. Um, so instead of like trying to share, you know, four reports with people and to show them different data and help explain them what's important, these dashboards can help describe the story for you. So that's why I really like dashboards. Okay, and then I just wanna go into this a little bit more about the um, opportunities, because as we said, we wanna see, well, which ones are creating opportunities? So if we edit this, I'm actually gonna do a save as here, follow my best practice here, um, save as. And we only have limited information or limited space here. Includes opportunity only. Okay. So save that. And then so I can do my filters now. Show me opportunity. I just want to know if there is an opportunity. I'm not going to worry about um, if it's closed or not. So um, I think we can purchase opportunity name not equal. Oh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not totally positive if I want to do that. Opportunity not equal to, okay. Let's see if that worked or if there's just opportunity created date equals empty also would be my other option. So yeah, these are all the ones that now have opportunities affiliated with it and say, oh, well, gosh, I want to know the dollar amount. Okay, so then instead of here, um, let's stack by one, sum of converted. And that's going to be, again, a record number. So to get the dollar value in there, I don't know. I have to play around with that. So Carol, there were some, there's some questions that I don't know if you want to take them now or, or later. Oh yeah. Great. So, so there were two questions first from Marianne Fields. Hey, Marianne. Um, this is going back a little bit earlier in your presentation, uh, for a client that only uses email programs, is it worth coaching them through campaign configuration? Um, I, I would say yes, because in the, back to go into the campaigns where you can see like this information my developer doesn't have can send campaigns it's really cool i mean you can have a group that your campaign then can go into this here so in one place you can see all the activity so instead of having to open up each list email send And I probably would not do for each one. Maybe you could even, some clients we did like just by quarter. So we can see how are our campaigns performing this quarter, make a new campaign for each quarter. But I would definitely still tie them together. But I probably won't worry too much about the member statuses unless you have like a clear call to action because I, I don't think opens and clicks are credible enough to say influence unless you really, really just have no other way to to segment your ice cold leads then then maybe it'll help a little bit but there's just such a like variety or a a, a large percentage of error that it, it doesn't really tell you the truth exactly. and the second question is uh from tyler so tyler um, are these solutions something that can be applied to previously created campaigns slash contacts or is it better equipped with newly created campaigns. And I think Tyler is referring to um, when you were creating, when you, when you were working on the dashboard modules. Tyler, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so I'm not understanding the question. Could we give him? Um, I can I can see, I can try and take, get him to off mute. Um, yeah, see if that'd be helpful. 
Um, let me see if I can. All right, Tyler, you're off mute if you want to share your thoughts. Hi, Ben. Hi, Kara. How are you? Thank Hi, you. Hi, Tyler. Thanks for joining. Um, my question was mainly about at the beginning of your camp uh, of the presentation, you were talking about the source campaign and, and really making sure that all that attribution is, is mirrored in product and Salesforce. Is it worth the effort to try to track down earlier campaigns or is this kind of a shift in strategy of, hey, from this moment to stand forward, we need, we should be aligning our campaigns this way or can we retroactively apply it? I, well, yeah, I, I, I would say just moving forward because the problem is you can't, I mean, you could run automation rules to add people as campaign members in, but it'd just be a lot of work. Oh, let's find all the people that filled out this form last year and add them as campaign members. If you really need to like prove a point to someone and, or you really want some baselines to see how you did last year compared to next year, then maybe you spend to do it. You know, also depends on, yeah, like the bandwidth. Because it, it is kind of a lot of heavy lifting and you just gotta be really organized to go, okay, let's get all these campaign members into these into these form fills. But if it's just like, oh, all form fills last year, let's add them, make sure they're all campaign members um, in one campaign called website tracking. Yeah, go for it. But if it's, if you have like 17 different events and programs, I would just recommend doing it moving forward. Cool, thanks. All right, let me just go back to my deck here and see if I had anything else to review. I think that, um, so yeah, if you don't have campaigns there, you, so the as a use case for not having campaigns would be, um, you know, someone loaded a list to just straight to Salesforce and they didn't come from inbound leads, they weren't any part of your program or it's just a cold calling and you just wanna see maybe you're a sales operation person and you just want to see how many leads were converted this month and the salespeople have, you know, just find their own leads and just add them in manually. Um, so a couple of key things here is, you know, you start with those default reports that I suggested, um, you know, know how to edit. It sounds like, you know, it's a pretty mature group, but there are, you know, YouTube videos out there, how to edit Salesforce reports. And a lot of it's just playing with it. There's so many little nuances. And that's what the thing's so great about this system is, there are so many resources. You can just Google, how do I add a formula or, you know, chat GPT now says, well, how do I group um, by months? You know, so because you have like create a date and you can have this month, but in reports, you can actually do the grouping and the date thing, you know, to have that chart show how many um, converted leads each month, for example. Um, and then really to make this all work, I really want to emphasize, you know, having connected campaigns is really important um, to get that data to show up. Um, again, the prospects, they have to be assigned in Pardot. If they just come in from a form and you say add to Salesforce campaign and they're not in Salesforce, they will not show up as a campaign member. And you're like, why aren't they showing up? Um, and then we didn't really go into contact rules. Let me just touch base on that again here. So in an opportunity, Again, this is the dev edition, so I probably don't have too much opportunities. But actually, I don't know if any of you have dev editions. Uh, the Pardot dev edition is like constantly filling out forms for everyone. It's pretty funny. So it, it gives you a lot of activity, so it jumps up scores. So uh, related, so contact roles. So this is interesting. That one I did show up against that. But generally, the contact role here will be, you want to add that person to the opportunity. And then there's also um, in here, prime, well, let me just go, there's a couple different versions of this. Um, add contact roles. Oh, it's just that, find Chatty Kathy. And now what's happened here? Chatty, Lauren, oh, show selected, okay. So we can add these people. And then there's options to say what their role is. 
I recommend putting a role in there because this, is, again, is for reporting in the future. If you want to start going, okay, um, I want to know which were decision makers or not. Or there's actually some reports if you go contact roles and you, there's no role attached, even though you added them, um, sometimes they won't show up. And then I also would pick who the primary contact is because there's another default report in Salesforce that is just, it's like opportunities with primary contacts. And if you don't have a primary contact, these people just these these opportunities just don't show up. So, in anything to do with contact roles, I would suggest filling up as much data as possible. And then the cool thing is, if you do use the lead process, so when a lead is ready to convert to an opportunity contact in an account, this contact role gets attached automatically, and the campaign gets attached automatically. Um, but if you're like, if I added this person now and Chatty Kathy was attached to a campaign, she would not, her campaign influence wouldn't, wouldn't be on here um, because I added her after it was, um, well, actually the, the time, it, it's either going to pick just the most recent um, campaign that she was a part of. So you want to just kind of play around. Sometimes the dates matter. Um, and it's just too much to go into all the different nuances right now. Um, but also, like kind of one of the big challenges is say you bring a new lead in, and the lead is Andrea, and then Andrea says, "Oh, you need to talk to Stephen." Stephen was never part of the a campaign member, and Stephen now is the opportunity person. You're not going to get that influence. So coming up with some systems to like somehow be able to identify when people change um, decision makers from the inbound leads. And there is a um, primary campaign source is a default um, tool in here. So if you can somehow train the sales people to always make sure they have this primary campaign source and that they know that this lead originated with Andrea, moved to Stephen and Andrea was the website or the trade show and put that one in here. So coming up with trying to automate that can be a little tricky. Um, so most people do that pretty manual right now, but maybe AI will change that for us. All right. So we are almost at our hour here. So um, does anyone have any other, you know, just general questions about Pardot or has everyone got that email opt-out sync thing done that was due yesterday? That was kind of funny how it just kept changing. And if anyone was responsible for that, but if you have any questions, ask me about it fixed it for like 12 clients. So, um, all right. Well, thank you all. I don't, I, don't, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Uh, this is uh, super helpful. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are going to get value from this, both who were able to join us and then people who watch the videos um, days, weeks, months, years later. Um, yes. So that's, uh, that's, that's always the goal with these, uh, with these meetings is to bring people in who are able to provide that kind of, of of insight and um kind of um solutioning basically trying to help people solve for a specific need um i've had people reach out to me years later for something i did that oh, something nice. that, that, that someone else did i had someone on the on the on the um on this so it's it definitely it provides lots of value downstream um for a lot of people really internationally if it, it, it it covers it's it's global so nice. um, this is um, super great. And yeah, the um, if you want the um, the deck from um, uh, from her, then definitely uh, reach out to her on LinkedIn. Um, she said, correct, you're, you're happy to, to share. With yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me a, a DM on LinkedIn and let's connect. And I'm happy to share that with you. Yep. All right, great. Carol. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, this was uh, very informative and um, a lot of details Some really good questions. Um, would be happy to have you back again. So if you have something else you okay. want to talk about in the future, just let me know. Um, I love it. All right. I'm well, curious how many people are from outside of the Tampa area. Oh, I'm do you get a lot? Pretty of, much like, everybody. I mean, except for Tyler. Um, oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know where everyone else is from. Um, I think Marianne is up in the Midwest. Yeah, C no, Cincinnati. Um, I don't know who else. Um, We've got a few other people. People started to sort of leave. That's people. great. I think your group, Atlanta group, I think does some virtuals. I think um, yeah. Laura 
and Austin does some virtuals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, yeah, the Austin, Austin, Atlanta, myself, um, a few others. Um, I think also North um, Northeast does does them occasionally. Um, does does either a mix of virtual and in person, but. Um, Did you do a local holiday party though? Your group. <laughs> That's my problem.